So Ed, it's good to be doing another video with you. I thought we would talk a little bit about creativity. I read about that the other day, about how you keep turning to creativity right now as you're going through this, and especially sketching. Why don't you tell us what you're doing now? What I... I have pieces of different things in my head now, and I try to match them together and make make sense of them. I'm, my mind seems to continually coming up with different shapes and lines and combinations of colors. And I try to take them piece by piece and put them down and see what they come in, create what they become. So these things are going through your head? Yeah. All the time? All the time now. I see different things. Is it different than before? Somewhat, yes. What's di what's different about it? There is so much so much of it. Before it mainly, I had just a few different pieces, and I would draw them together and make something of them. Now it's like a an even bigger collage. There's more stuff there. Different colors. More colors, more lines. So are you drawing the literal things that are in your head, or you yeah, I take pieces of what I see kind of bring them down my arm and put that particular piece down. Why do you think this is so important to you now? I've been thinking about it quite a lot and I think it's the fact that I was always active and I feel so inadequate if I'm just laying here in the bed doing nothing, trying to get myself sitting in a chair where I'm comfortable and all that. There doesn't seem to be a result. Whereas if I sit down, grab this uh, piece of paper and some pencils, I have a result after I get done. Something concrete. Uh, yeah, I'm not just fighting to get something. I can finally grab hold of something after a few minutes and see I'm still being able to be productive. So for you, this creativity is really about your, your being yeah. alive and productive and having meaning. Yeah, knowing I'm still able to I am still alive still and able to do something. I Otherwise, the minute you wake up, you, you want to draw. Yeah. Well, the minute everything starts kicking in, it's I've got to. I call it. I've got to become productive. I can't just sit there and wait. It's very hard for me. Like if I need somebody to help me do something, it's very very hard for me to ask them. Can. You know, can you help me for a minute, do this, move me around? It feels humiliating to yes. you to ask for help. And the other thing about it that uh, Jeremy told me about, uh, he said, you're going to find that there's no waiting time. All of a sudden, you're going to say you want something, and you want it right then. And he's absolutely true. When I say I need a drink, I don't want to turn into a monster. But if I say I need a drink, I need it, and I need it right now. There's, Why do you think that is? Is that physical? Or I think that's because it's taken the ability for you to do it yourself away, and you're dependent on these people, and then you're caught between that rock and a hard place. You should still be able to do that, but yet you've got to wait on somebody to help you do it, and you get anxious. You you just your your concept of time seems to turn into one thing right now. Which also it makes you feel alive, perhaps. Yeah. And, yeah. and engaged. Oh. So that's a very pure kind of creativity that's really making a lot of difference to you now. Yeah. yeah. So, so when you want something and someone has to help you do it, is that is that humiliating to you? Yes, it's very hard to do. Is that the worst thing for you? It's the absolute worst now. And do you get angry or do you get emotional? Uh, you get emotional. You just, it's like... It's a combination of you realize those people are busy, they have things to do, but it's almost like you can't hold back. There's anger right there and you want to jump right on it and say, now, we need to do this now. You don't want to be a pain in the ass, but it's, yeah, you have to but do it. It's, that's the way the mind now works, is there's just two times, right now and after now. Right. I and mean, there's no, there, other times. there's no wait anywhere anymore. It's just that you, I mean, you need a drink, you need it right then. You want to get up and get on the commode, you need to do it right then.
Yeah. Well, you need to draw, you need to do it yeah. right then. You can't just sit back and say, well, give me a minute or we'll be right with you. It, it changes your whole concept of, of time, where it's right now or you're late. Now, some of this is because you're an artist, don't you think? I think that's part of it. And I think it's, uh, there's somewhere in my mind it tells me the fact that it takes away those things that you learn so early and are so easy. All your life. Yeah, that it's like a, like a little fight going on inside of you. You should know how to just throw your feet off the side of the bed and stand up and go to the bathroom. Do you feel at some point you have to accept that you can't? I think I'm going, I will accept it eventually. But as of right now, it's, it's, a hard thing. it's still very hard to do. And it's, I'm only accepting it in little bits and pieces. Right. In but, your own time. Yeah. But I think eventually it's something that you do come to grips with and learn. You know, you, you reteach yourself. Just like we do in anything else. You almost just, like you have to go back to, to relearn things yeah. that you always knew and do and, them in a different way. Yeah, and find out the other process you've got to go through to do it. Well, that's a very beautiful statement you made. I was very touched when you said, uh, you know, um, it reminds you that you're still alive. You're still alive. Yes, I am. Okay. And I have no intentions of stopping being alive. I may have to change the way I accept life, but I still think there's plenty of it out there to live. You a tough son of a bitch you'd be. I've got double row tits, one on each side. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank much, you. Much love to you. Much love to you too, John.